Good morning. This is Juan Jose Arroyo. I am from Complutense University and I'm here to present the paper The Power to Propagate Its Own Kind, A Journey of Self-Discovery in Blade Runner 2049. 35 years after Ridley Scott's Blade Runner, director Denis Villeneuve repressed the saga with Blade Runner 2049. The opening credits of the film serve to explain both what has happened after the events of the first film and the workings of the diegetic world of Los Angeles in the year 2049. While in Scott's film, the anguish experienced by Roy Beatty's team of replicants at the knowledge of a program of solitude serves Blade Runner to posit philosophical questions about the nature of death uh, that have troubled humans in the extra diegetic world, Villeneuve's film, in contrast, transitions to another equally troublesome philosophical question, i.e. the creation of life and the purpose of said creation. Elana Gomel concludes that Villeneuve conveys the sequel's reaction in a twofold manner. In addition to Gomel's observations, the two films are populated by numerous references to Christianity. Blade Runner 2049 continues its predecessor's utilization of biblical references. The two films' usage of Christian texts can be explained given that the Bible is According to the aforementioned explanation, it is no wonder that the Blade Runner saga utilizes the Bible as a source of inspiration for its stories. As has been argued, the central theme of Blade Runner is the fear of death. In Blade Runner 2049, it is the capacity to create life from an impossible source creator. In Villeneuve's story, some old model replicants in cooperation with newer android models hope to hide and protect what they refer to as a, quote, miracle, end quote, that is, a child born from a replicant. The film's protagonist, Joe, also known as Kay, is a new model replicant and Blade Runner tasked with locating and destroying said miracle child. The present article analyzes Joe's quest of self-discovery during his search for the miracle child while focusing on numerous religious references the film presents during its said search. Blade Runner 2049 commences its runtime with replicant Joe looking for another Nexus 8 replicant gone into hiding. Said replicant, named Shaper Morton is a farmer who lives in isolation. Joe, needing to confirm Morton's identity by looking at the serial number Morton carries in his eyes sclera, and after having thusly done so, ends up retiring the farmer replicant. However, before Morton's murder, the two of them have a brief conversation during their fight. Morton asks the Blade Runner, this brief dialogue offers an important piece of information that complements what was already offered in the film's initial credits, i.e. the new replicants are not only programmed to obey, but also not to attempt escape. It can thus be inferred that the new model replicants designed by Neander Wallace are better equipped for combat that Dr. Tyrell's older models, given that new replicants, should they find themselves in a perilous situation, cannot run to safety. Instead, they would, in accordance with their programming, be forced into a fight to the death. Moreover, Joe's comment seems to reveal his feelings of supremacy in relation to old model replicants, since he does not believe Morton to be the same kind of replicant he is. For Joe, Morton's kind is, unlike Joe's replicant class, flawed. Morton responds to Joe's bravado. The quote's last words serve to introduce the film's first Christian reference. The Oxford English Dictionary defines miracle in the following way. Although Joe does not know what miracle Morton is referring to, the importance of the word leaves its mark on the Blade Runner. 
after reporting to his superior, Lieutenant Josie, also known as Man, agent who later orders Joe to return to police headquarters for his baseline test, Joe finds a small flower lying next to a dead tree on Morton's property. Joe inspects the soil and the ground next to a tree, finds a metal case containing a skeleton, and brings the skeleton back to Los Angeles to be studied. Joe's post-traumatic baseline test is also, I argue, worth of attention due to the Christian references apparent in its content. During the performance of the test, Scan asks Joe the following. The first element of interest seen in this series of questions is the repetition of specific terms in series of threes. Cells is repeated by a scan three times after a question before shifting to interlinked. Interlinked is repeated six times after a question. The first instance of interlinked merely establishes the term repetitions change from cells to interlinked. Although this six can be separated into two series of three given the nature of the questions. The first three questions are related to feelings of love, while the other set of threes concern theoretical impossibilities for a replicant or the longing for something. Furthermore, of the scan questions above cited, two of them stand out in relation to Christianity. The first one, did they teach you how to feel finger to finger, is reminiscent of Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam. The Vatican Sistine Chapel's fresco portrays the creation of man by God as narrated in Genesis. Michelangelo's fresco shows how God's right index finger and Adam's left have already touched and are very close to each other. Of Scan's questions, the word feel can be interpreted as to produce the sensation or give the impression of being, according to the Oxford English Dictionary. Thus, as seen in the famous fresco, God, via feeling finger to finger, endows Adam with entity. In relation to God as the father and creator of Adam, Scan's question to replicant Joe carries a divine connotation. That is, that the replicant was created by a godlike figure. In Blade Runner 2049, the mantle of godlike creator of the replicants is worn by industrialist Neander Wallace. Unlike Dr. Tyrell in Blade Runner, Wallace openly displays his divine self categorization. Rebecca Brammer, for instance, argues that Wallace's god complex is. Furthermore, Wallace utilizes a clay-like material to craft his replicants. Similarly, the god of Genesis uses clay for the creation of man. And now, from the clay of the ground, the Lord God formed man. In the scene depicted by Brammer's quote, Wallace tells Love, his replicant servant, that he In saying so, Wallace implies that his predecessor, Dr. Tyrell, creates replicants that of evil character, i.e. disobedient killers. However, since Wallace, by his own estimation, only creates good-natured replicants, i.e. obedient androids, his creation serves him as a proof of his own benevolence. The second question asked of the replicant Joe by a scan, what's it like to hold your child in your arms, also contains Christian connotations. Arguably one of the best known images of a child being in his or her progenitor's arm, at least in the canon of Christian iconography, is Michelangelo's De Pieta. In the sculpture, the Virgin Mary holds the corpse of her son Jesus Christ after the crucifixion. Michelangelo represents a mother's sorrow, pain and helplessness following the death of her child. Scan's question to Joe, its cruelty notwithstanding, given that Joe is, as a replicant, incapable of having a child, becomes transcendental with the film's plot then reveals that a child was in fact born from a replicant, something hitherto believed to be impossible. Returning to the inspection of the skeleton brought by Joe to police headquarters, 
The analysis of the bones reveals that they belong to an anatomical female and that she most likely died in childbirth, a conclusion reached as a result of injuries identified in the corpse's pelvis. Joe then discovers that the bones contain a serial number impressed in them, a number later revealed to have belonged to Blade Runner's replicant character Rachel. This discovery leads Joe to conclude that the remains are of replicant origin. Unlikely as it seems, given the stated rules of Joe's diegetic world, the evidence is clear. Said replicant was able to conceive and give birth to a child, hence the miracle identified by Morton. Lieutenant Josie, alarmed by what she considers to be dreadful news, explains to Joe that Josie understands that there is one thing, albeit a thing of enormous biological importance, that differentiates humanity from its replicant underlings, i.e. the capacity to produce offspring. According to Josie, if the world at large knew that a replicant was once able to perform said reproductive feat, then the political world order will collapse and replicant rebellion will arise. Joe, showing uncharacteristic reluctance in the performance of his duties, tells his superior, I've never retired something that was born before, to which Josie wonders what's the difference. Joe states, to be born is to have a soul, I guess. Joe's use of the word soul is, I argue, significant. In the first book of Kings, chapter 26, verse 4, it is said, I held thy life precious. May the Lord hold mine precious and deliver me at all time of peril. Scholars have concluded that this passage's message is that by using the word soul as used in accordance with Leon Dufour and Lato Ross's biblical conclusion, Joe implies that the replicant born child's life is precious. Furthermore, the fact of this replicant born child brings with it the need for a broader definition of replicant. Joe's journey of self-discovery takes an unexpected turn when he returns to Morton's farm and, after finding an infant's sock hidden in a piano, notices numbers carved into a tree trunk. These numbers, 6, 10, 21, remind Joe of the numbers carved into a base of a wooden toy horse he remembers owning as a child. The memory of the toy horse leads Joe to conclude that he may very well be the miracle replicant child once hidden. Believing the tree trunk numbers refer to a birth date, as a matter of fact they refer both to the replicant child's birth date and Rachel's death date, Joe, using a state archive, discovers a record of two children having been born on said date. Joe also discovers that the DNA profiles for these children, a male and a female, are identical. After pointing out that the genetic coincidence he has uncovered is impossible, Joe concludes that one of these isn't real, it's a copy. The fact of the identical genetic codes reinforces Joe's suspicion that he is indeed the replicant child, given that the female newborn is said to have died of a genetic disorder known as Galatian syndrome. Joe, however, does not reveal this information to his superior. Joe's behavior concurs with Wallace's statement that before we even know what we are, we fear to lose it. In other words, even before he has confirmed that he is in fact the replicant child, Joe fears the loss of hope that a contradiction of his belief will represent. Also, given his belief that he was indeed born instead of manufactured, Joe longs to know more about his birth parents. When he then locates Descartes' hideout, Joe does not 
despite Descartes' persistent aggressive behavior, want to fight Descartes given Joe's belief that Descartes may be his father. However, although the Blade Runners, Descartes and Joe are arguably the protagonists of their respective films, neither of them is the film's transcendental character. That role is reserved for Rachel. Although Blade Runner concludes with Rachel and Descartes stepping into an elevator, Blade Runner 2049, in contrast, assigns the character of Rachel a position of even greater importance. In order to do so, Villeneuve's film reveals Dr. Tyrell's final trick, procreation. Identifying said trick as the only thing Wallace is incapable of accomplishing, as the industrialist himself states, I cannot breed them, so help me I have tried. For Wallace, as well as for Lieutenant Josie, finding Rachel and Descartes' replicant child thus becomes a priority, although for different reasons. Rachel's name has biblical connotations as well, although its spelling varies. In the book of Genesis, Jacob falls in love with Rachel. In order to win her hand, Jacob must work for her father for seven years. After some complications and over a dozen years of labor, Jacob is finally allowed to marry Rachel and her sister Leah. Unlike her sister, Rachel cannot give Jacob children, which makes her angry and disappointed, as is explained in Genesis 31. Rachel, Meanwhile, when she found that she remained barren, looked with envy on her sister. The word barren is also used by Wallace when touching the abdomen of a newly born replicant. However, Rachel's incapacity to give Jacob a child changes when it is explained that Another similarity between the Bible and Villeneuve's film is Wallace's reference to the above quoted biblical passage when Wallace states, Blade Runner's Dr. Tyrell also finds the way of erasing the replicant's disgrace of infertility by giving Rachel the capacity to conceive. Moreover, the biblical Rachel delivers two children, i.e. Joseph and Benjamin, and, in accordance with Blade Runner's 2049's Rachel, she also dies in childbirth. Although Rachel only conceived one child, Descartes, Fraser and Morton, as has been already mentioned, altered the records of the child's birth in order to make it appear that there were two children born to replicant one of which died of disease. Rachel and Descartes' replicant child turns out to be the supposedly deceased girl Joe reads about in the birth records. Rachel's child is Dr. Anna Stellin. Dr. Stellin explains to Joe that she has a compromised immune system and as a result has to live a life of freedom so long as it's behind glass. Furthermore, Dr. Stelling mentions that she was first locked in a sterile chamber at eight. It seems that Fraser and Morton made Dr. Stelling believe, a belief confirmed by the forged birth records, that she has Galatian syndrome, a lie concocted for her own safety and as a means to protect her from the truth. As Fraser reveals to Joe later in the film, the plan was to hide the child and, having hidden her, all participants in the scheme swore to secrecy. Fraser explains to Joe. Fraser's words are again reminiscent of the Tyrell Corporation motto, more human than human. As has been stated, Joe finds the number 61021 carved in the tree next to Rachel's remains. Those numbers, together with the disease that Dr. Stelling believes herself to have, that is, Galatian syndrome, help to better understand the coming replicant rebellion. The Bible's New Testament contains the epistle of the blessed Apostle Paul to the Galatians. Transposing Bogart's summary of the epistle's thesis to Fraser's message, 
it can be concluded that the replicants' faith in the miraculous child will free them from human oppression, i.e. the law, which still encourages slavery among replicants, as it's seen when Wallace tells love. Moreover, based on Bogart's summary, those replicants not willing to join the rebel cause led by Dr. Stelling agree with Wallace's methods and his intentions in relation to replicants. In the epistle film Simiel, Dr. Stelling's symbolic importance becomes evident in the Apostle's words. The Apostle Paul's words convey the same message Fraser wants to impart to her replicant followers i.e., when the miracle child arrives, its presence will serve as proof that humans are no longer the only creators of replicants. Hence, replicants need no longer be submitted to human whims, desires, and decrees. Moreover, strengthening the case for her future of screen rebellion, Fraser will agree with the Apostle Paul when he states, In other words, Dr. Stelling was never treated as a replicant slave. Instead, she was treated by past replicants and will be treated by future ones as a wanted child, a leader divinely appointed by Rachel's unique reproductive fit. The Epistle to the Galatians also explains Joe's Blade Runner serial number, i.e. Officer KD63.7. Chapter 6, verses 3 to 7 of the Epistle to the Galatians reads In the context of the film, as has been mentioned, Joe, for a portion of the film's runtime, believes himself to be the miracle child and, as such, he sees himself to be of great worth. Nevertheless, Joe is, in truth, worth nothing at all, since he is but another ordinary replicant. In relation to Galatians, Fraser is Joe's teacher and shares with him and other replicants' disciples what they will have to bestow on their fellow rebels in order to ensure the overthrow of humanity. The number 61021, carved on the tree above Rachel's gravesite, can also be explained from a biblical context. Chronologically speaking, in the film's diegetic course of events, whether these plot events are shown on, a or in, on a screen or not, the Epistle of the Galatians will correspond to the character of Dr. Stelling. Having said that, the coming replicant rebellion will then correspond to the Epistle of the Blessed Apostle Paul to the Ephesians, that is, the book which comes after Galatians. When considering Blade Runner 2049 enigmatic digits 6, 10, 21 in relation to chapter 6, verse 10 to 21 in the Epistle to the Ephesians, one discovers the following. The message conveyed in this passage is one of resistance against oppressors a battle waged in the name of God. The above passage offers a glimpse into the film's off-screen replicant rebellion, a dark time which awaits the film's characters. It is a coming period of a struggle after which the evils of humanity will be overcome and peace will reign between humans and replicants. Thank you very much.